ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ ഈ പ്രത്യേക സാഹചര്യത്തിൽ അനുപമ ഓൺലൈൻ ക്ലാസുകൾ ആരംഭിച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന വിവരം വളരെ സന്തോഷത്തോടുകൂടി നിങ്ങളെ അറിയിക്കുകയാണ് പ്ലസ് വൺ പ്ലസ് ടു വിദ്യാർത്ഥികൾക്ക് അവരുടെ ബോർഡ് പരീക്ഷയ്ക്കും ഒപ്പം വിവിധ എൻട്രൻസ് മത്സര പരീക്ഷകൾക്കും സഹായകപരമായ തരത്തിൽ ഫിസിക്സ് കെമിസ്ട്രി മാത്തമാറ്റിക്സ് ബയോളജി വിഷയങ്ങൾക്ക് വളരെ പ്രഗൽഭരും പരിചയസമ്പന്നരുമായ അധ്യാപകരുടെ മികച്ച ക്ലാസ്സുകൾ ഓൺലൈൻ ക്ലാസ്സുകളിലൂടെ ലഭിക്കുന്നു അനുപമയുടെ യൂട്യൂബ് ചാനൽ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ചെയ്യുക ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് പേജ് ലൈക്ക് ചെയ്യുക നിങ്ങളെല്ലാവരെയും അനുപമയുടെ ഈ ക്ലാസ്സുകളിലേക്ക് വളരെ ഹാർദ്ദമായി സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു അനുപമയുടെ എല്ലാ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട വിദ്യാർത്ഥി വിദ്യാർത്ഥികളെയും അവരുടെ കൂട്ടുകാരെയും വളരെ സന്തോഷത്തോടുകൂടി സസ്നേഹം സഹൃദയം സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു നന്ദി നമസ്കാരം chapter 9 mechanical properties solids properties of matter mechanical properties of solids mechanics of solids you know mechanics materials materials and its motion the main branch of mechanics you know dynamics dynamics there motion of bodies under the action of forces you know force newton's laws of motion from that we derive force that is the main part of mechanics dynamics they have to derive force you know force f equals m a mass into acceleration mass material mechanics in your acceleration that is force you know the applications of force you studied there what are the applications of force uses of force the first use of force is to move a body for moving a body force is required the second use to stop motion of a body stop the motion of a body third use to change the direction of motion of a board and the fourth use you know to change the speed of motion of a these are all you studied in the first book in newton's laws of motion the applications of force first one to move a board second one to stop the motion of a body third one to change the direction of motion of a body and the fourth one to change the speed of motion change means increase or decrease you can say change change to increase speed or to decrease speed or to change the speed of motion of a body and we are going to study the fifth application of force that is to change the length volume or shape 
of a book. The change in length, volume, or shape of a book. This application we are going to discuss in this chapter elasticity. Not electricity, elasticity. It's a property of matter. Property of matter, the important property of matter. Consider a wire, if its upper end is fixed on the ceiling of a room. The upper end is fixed and we are applying a load at its lower end. A load is applied here. A load applied at the lower end of this wire. Now what happens? Let this wire is of length 1 meter. Length of this wire let be 1 meter and we are applying a load of 10 kg. Let mass apply 10 kg. That is a load. So now the force acting downwards MA mass into acceleration 10 kg. Here acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. 9.8 we are taking it as 10 meter per second square. So 10 into 10 is 100 kg meter per second square. What is kg meter per second square? Newton, that is a unit of force. We are applying a load of 10 kg means we are applying a force of 100 Newton downwards. This here the force is force due to gravity. That is weight. The weight acting downwards. Force due to gravity. That is we usually saying weight, power. Force due to gravity. Force due to gravity. Mass into acceleration due to gravity. That is weight mg. That is M F equals weight is force due to gravity F. M mass G. Acceleration due to gravity. Here the acceleration. So 100 Newton force is acting downwards. This is this wire is now in a tension. So this force applied is a tensile force. This is a tensile force. Tensile force. Here a tension is applied, we can see. Now what happens is the length of the wire increased to 1.01 meter. An increase in length produced for this wire. Length 1 meter increased to 1.1 meter. So force can make to change the length of a material. Another application, volume can be changed. Consider a tube, test tube here water we are taking. And we are, this is the volume of water now. That is poured into another big vessel. Now what happens? Now the volume is this much. Here the volume is changed. By the application of pressure, the volume is changed. Their pressure is in the case of fluids. Fluids means they can flow. Liquids and gases are fluids. In the fluids, in the liquids, instead of force is there, force is measured as pressure. The force acting per unit area. Usually thrust acting per unit area. Thrust is force. Thrust is the weight of the fluid acting downwards which compresses that fluid. So here the pressure. Here the volume is changed. So force can make to change length. Force can make to change volume. Force can make to change the shape of a volume. Consider a piece of bread, modern bread piece. Its lower surface is fixed. We are applying a law, a force on the upper surface so that its, its, its shape is changed. Not change in volume, but shape is changed like this. So here this, this ABCD let the face of a cube, ABCD is the face of a cube, its lower surface CD is fixed, you are applying a force F on the upper surface, so A is shifted to A dash and B is shifted to B dash. So a change here, the upper surface change. Here an angle theta shifted. Now it becomes A dash, B dash, C D. Now its shape is changed. Not any change in volume. Here this much shifted. That much here shifted. An angle theta. The, that is changed to an angle theta. Connect the mind. That is angle theta change. 
So it's here shape change. So force can makes to change shape of a material, shape of a body. So the fifth application of force to change length, volume, or shape of a body. Now this wire, now this body is said to be a deformed body. Deformed body. This wire is now a deformed wire. Or a strained wire. Strained. Strained. Or deformed body. This applied force, 100 Newton, is a deforming force. You can say as a deforming force. Deforming force. So what is a deforming force? Deforming force is a force which makes to deform. Or deforming force is a force which makes to change in length, volume or shape of a body. Deforming, deformation takes place. A deformation takes place means a change in length, volume or shape takes place to a body. Now, what happens? We are removing this load. A 10 kg load applied to the end of this wire, up, upper end is fixed. We are applying a load 10 kg so that 1 meter length changed to 1.01 meter. An extension produced for this wire. An extension, an elongation produced for this wire. Means a change in length produced for the wire because of this tension, because of this deforming force, because this elongating force. And what is what happens? We are removing this load. The load is removed. Now this material wire shows a tendency to recover the original length. 1.1 meter in the 1 meter leg wire tendency. The class with the first floor in the ground floor leg. We go to the first step. What is your tendency? Your tendency. Why? Because of the chamel. Here, this 1.1 1 .1 meter length of the wire and the length of 1.01 meter length of altitude because of a force and by the withdrawal of that force, this material wire shows a tendency to recover its original length. If volume change, to recover its original volume. If shape change, to recover its original shape. That tendency is shown by matter. That property of matter we call elasticity. So what is elasticity? Define elasticity. Elasticity is that property of matter which shows a tendency to recover its original length or to recover its original volume or to recover its original shape by the withdrawal of the deforming force. So what is defined elasticity? Elasticity is that property of matter which shows a tendency to recover its original condition by the withdrawal of the applied force. Applied force is not named as deforming force. So by the removal of the deforming force, material bodies shows a tendency to recover the original condition. That tendency is shown by matter we call elasticity. We want to measure that. This is the phenomenon of tendency of to recover of the condition. And why this property elasticity? Why the material bodies shows a tendency to recover the original length or original volume or original shape? Why the body shows the tendency to regain its original condition? Because of chamber. He said he chamber for this wire. Why this wire shows the tendency to recover the original condition? What is the mechanism behind the property of elasticity? The mechanism behind the property of elasticity is Newton's third law. For entrance examination, this question to be asked, what is the mechanism? The mechanism of elasticity. The law behind elasticity is Newton's third law. That is the mechanism of elasticity. Newton's third. You know this uh, this wire upper end is fixed and we are applying a load at its lower end. Upper end is fixed, we are applying a load. 
So what happens? Upper end is fixed. One meter length. One point zero one meter. With the removal of this load, you know now here what is a tensile force is acting downwards. Under Newton force is acting downwards. By Newton's third law, there is a force acting in the opposite direction. That is also under Newton. This force, this reactional force, this reaction. Tends the material to recover the original condition. So we say the mechanism of elasticity is Newton's third law. This hundred Newton force is the tensile force acting downwards, or the deforming force acting downwards. By the removal of the deforming force, this body shows the tendency to recover its original condition because of the reactional force, because of the reaction. That is also hundred Newton. And this reactional force. This reaction we call as recovering force. This force tends the material to recover the original condition. So it is called a recovering force. That force actually stored inside the material. We can't see that force, but that force is stored inside the material. So it is also known as restoring force. Restoring force. Restoring force, so deforming force, tensile force, re recovering force, reaction force, all are the same magnitude. And how to measure this recovering force? This recovering force is measured as the force acting per unit area. Force acting per unit area, Newton per meter square. This recovering force, reactional force, restoring force, acting per unit area, we call as stress. Stress, stress. So define stress. Stress is the recovering force or reactional force acting per unit area. Or stress is measured as force by area. So the unit is. Newton, the unit of force, area, meter square, Newton per meter square, it is called PA, Pascal, Pascal, slow you know, Pascal, PA, in short we say, PA means, Pascal means, Newton per meter square. What is the formula for stress, dimensional formula, M, L, T raised to minus 2 is the formula for force, area, length into breadth, length into length, Distance into distance, length into length, L into L, L square. So you got the dimensional formula of stress is M raised to 1. L square 1 L cancel, this L numerator L raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2. So dimensional formula for stress is M raised to 1, L raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2. So Newton per meter square or PA or Pascal is kg meter raised to minus 1 second raised to minus 2 kg per meter square per second square sorry kg per meter per second kg per meter per second square ml raised to minus 1 d raised to minus 2 kg meter raised to minus 1 second raised to minus 2 that is kg per meter per second square all are the same this is the fundamental unit kg per meter per second square or kg meter raised to minus 1 second raised to minus 2 or Newton per meter square that is PA Pascal. In CGS system the four unit of force is dying, dying per centimeter square that is the CGS unit for stress. So stress is a physical quantity, it is a force measured per unit area, it is a force, it is a recovering force acting per unit area, you know recovering force is a restoring force, we can't measure it directly. So recovery is equal in magnitude, recovering force is equal in magnitude of deforming force. So stress is measured as the deforming force acting per unit area. Or stress, in short we can say stress is force by area. So stress, you got stress, what is stress, define stress, stress is defined as the Recovering force acting per unit area. Recovering force is a restoring force, but recovering force is equal in magnitude of the applied deforming force. 
So space is measured as deforming force acting by gravitation. Or space is equal to force by area Newton per meter square P A Pascal. That is the unit for stress. If the stress, if you are applying force, then a change in length produced. Then the stress we called linear stress. Linear stress is stress. That stress produces a change in length. Longitudinal stress we can see. Linear or longitudinal stress. If the stress produces a change in volume, then we call the volume stress. There is a bulk stress we can see. Bulk stress, volume stress, bulk stress. Change in volume produced, that stress. Shape, there is shearing stress. The stress we call shearing stress. So you got one stress out of this. If you are applying force, that force makes to change in length. Then it's called a linear stress. That force makes to change in volume. That stress is volume stress. That force change in shape. Then it is called shearing stress. Linear stress is stress in length. Volume stress is stress in volume. Shearing stress is stress in shape. Then we can measure the strain, change in length. Its change in length is measured with respect to the original length. Change in length, let delta L be the small change in length. Point not one. Delta L be the small change in length. Let capital L the original length. Then delta L by L. Change in length by original length. That is a linear strain. There is a strain in length. A longitudinal strain. Linear strain. Delta L by L. If the delta V is a small change in volume, let V is the original volume of water, then delta V by V. That is volume strain. Volume strain. Change in volume by original volume. Let theta is the shearing strain. Here shearing strain is an angle, you know. ABCD is the face of a cube. Lower surface ED is fixed. We are applying a force on the upper surface. So A is shifted to A dash and B is shifted to B dash. A dash, B dash, CD is now the shape of this face of the cube. So here theta is the angle shifted. That angle shifted theta. This theta, that is that theta. Same. So theta is the shearing strain produced. So shearing strain is an angle. Shearing strain is the strain in shape. It is an angle. So there are three strain. A strain is defined as the change in dimension to the ratio of change in dimension to the original dimension. Change by original. Delta L by L change in length by original length. Delta V by V change in volume by original volume. Theta the angle shifted, that is a shearing strain. Here delta V by V, volume strain. Delta L by L, linear strain. So linear strain, volume strain, shearing strain. So strain is equal to change in dimension by original dimension. What is the unit for strain? No unit. Delta L change in length by original length. Length by L, length. No unit. So L by L, no dimensional formula. Let that be change in volume by original volume. Change in volume is a volume. Volume by volume. No units, no dimension. Theta, you know, theta angle. Angle arc by radius, no dimension. So, your uh, angle shearing strain has no unit and no dimension. So, strain is a physical quantity having no unit and no dimension. And uh, the stress increases. The applied force increases. What happens? The applied force increases, strain also increased. Means stress increases, strain also increased. Linear stress is directly proportional to the linear strain. Longitudinal stress is directly proportional to longitudinal strain. When stress increases, strain also increases. So stress increases, strain also increases. Similarly, volume stress is directly proportional to volume strain. Shearing stress is directly proportional to shearing strain. Stress is directly proportional to strain. Stress is directly proportional to strain. Linear stress directly proportional to linear strain. Volume stress directly proportional to volume strain. 
Shearing stress directly proportional to shearing strain. See, linear stress is equal to longitudinal stress. Linear stress is equal to a constant proportionality changed to as equality with a constant. Here we are representing the constant as capital letter Y into linear strain. This constant Y we call Young's modulus. You know Thomas Young. Thomas Young is a scientist. So Young's modulus. Why Young's modulus? So what is why Young's modulus? He said modulus of elasticity. Y equals linear stress by linear strain. That is Young's modulus. Volume stress is directly proportional to volume strain. So volume stress is equal to a constant B into volume strain. This constant B we call as bulk modulus. So bulk modulus is equal to volume stress, bulk stress divided by Volume strain. Shearing stress is directly proportional to shearing strain. So shearing stress is equal to a constant R into capital R into shearing strain. This constant R we call rigidity modulus. Rigidity modulus. So there are three principal moduli for velocity. Modulus of velocity. Why? That is Young's modulus. That is linear stress by linear strain. B. Bulk modulus. That is volume stress by volume strain. R. Rigidity modulus. That is R equals shearing stress divided by shearing strain. Shearing stress divided by shearing strain. So generally we can say there are three moduli, one Young's modulus, two bulk modulus, three rigidity modulus. These are the three principal moduli of velocity. Stress is directly proportional to strain. So stress is equal to a constant K into strain. This constant K, that is here Young's modulus, here bulk modulus, here rigidity modulus. So K equals Stress by strain. So generally we can define stress is directly proportional to strain. Linear stress directly proportional to linear strain. Volume stress directly proportional to volume strain. Shearing stress directly proportional to shearing strain. Stress is directly proportional to strain. This is called Hooke's law. Thomas Hook, Hooke's law. State Hooke's law. And define modulus of elastic. Hooke's law states that within the elastic limit of a material, stress is directly proportional to strain. Stress is equal to a constant K into strain. K is equal to stress by strain. This constant K we call modulus of elasticity. Modulus of elasticity is a physical quantity. Elasticity is only a property. It is only a physical phenomena. Elasticity Measure the measurement of velocity as modulus of velocity, or is also named as coefficient of velocity. Coefficient of velocity, coefficient of velocity that is modulus of velocity. So, define modulus of velocity, define coefficient of velocity. The ratio of stress to strain is a constant, and this constant is called modulus of velocity. So state Hooke's law and define modulus of elasticity. Within the elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to strain. Stress is equal to a constant K into strain. This constant K is called modulus of velocity or coefficient of velocity. K is equal to stress by strain. So the ratio of stress to strain is a constant. And this constant is modulus of velocity. There are three moduli for elasticity. One Young's modulus, two bulk modulus, three rigidity modulus. If you are applying force, to a material, let the length change, then stress is linear stress. 
strain is linear strain, then linear plus well linear strain, then you got the Young's modulus. That is one modulus of velocity. So Young's modulus is the modulus of velocity for length. You are applying force, that force makes to change the volume. So volume plus by volume strain, then we call bulk modulus. So bulk modulus is a modulus of velocity for volume. We are applying force, that force makes to change in shape. An angle theta shifted for the surface of that material. They are shearing stress, they are shearing strain. Then we got shearing stress by shearing strain. Then we say rigidity modulus. So here generally we can say stress by strain, modulus of velocity. We didn't get direct K, we get as Young's modulus or bulk modulus or rigidity modulus. These are the three principal moduli of elast. And we are going to derive expressions for Young's modulus, bulk modulus, and rigidity modulus for a material. For Young's modulus, expression for bulk modulus, expression for rigidity modulus. Expression for Young's modulus, first, expression for Young's modulus. Expression or equation for Young's modulus. Young's modulus, you know, it is a modulus of velocity for length. Consider a wire of length L, capital L. Let uh, A area of cross section of the wire. Let we are applying a load, play or a force F on the wire. Upper end is fixed, we are applying a load F. So, a change in length in delta L produced for the length. So, delta L is the extension, change in length, elongation. So, here, what is the force applied? Here, the stress is linear stress. Stress is linear stress, force by area, F by A. That is a linear stress. F by A is linear stress. Here, linear strain. Strain is linear strain. That is delta L by L. You know, Young's modulus Y equals linear stress. That is longitudinal stress. By longitudinal strain, linear strain. So, expression for Y, F by A stress, linear stress, divided by change in length by original length, delta L by L. So, expression for Young's modulus equals F by A divided by delta L by A. F by A into L by delta L. So Y equals expression for X modulus Y equals F L by A delta L. This is expression for X modulus. So what is the expression for X modulus? Y equals F L by A delta L. This you know, F equals NG, you know. M A here NG. Law M into G force, tensile force. Linear stress is F by A. M F equals NG. Cross sectional area, you know, pi R square. What is R? Radius of the wire. So this can also be written as MGL by pi R square delta L. MGL by pi r square delta L. That is the expression for Young's modulus. What is the unit? Unit for Young's modulus is stress by strain. Root number meter square is the unit for st stress. Pascal by strain has no unit. So the unit for Young's modulus is also Newton per meter square. What is the formula? Formula for stress, you know. Stress by strain. Linear stress by linear strain. Stress ml raised minus 1, d raised minus 2. Strain has no unit. So the formula is Newton per meter square or Pascal. Formula is ml raised minus 1, t raised to minus 2. Kg meter raised to minus 1, second raised to minus 2. Kg per meter per second square. Same as for modulus of velocity, you know. Modulus of velocity k equals stress by strain. Strain has no unit and dimension. The unit for stress is Newton per meter square. So strain has no unit. Newton per meter square is PA. So the unit for coefficient of velocity also Newton per meter square. 
things modulus is a modulus of velocity in length, so the unit is root number meter square. Formula is ml raised to minus 1 raised to minus 2. So next we are going to derive an expression for bulk modulus. Expression for bulk modulus. Expression for bulk modulus. B. Bulk modulus, you know, the modulus of velocity for volume. Consider a surface of area A, volume of the surface will be capital V. Let delta V the small change in volume due to a force F applied on the surface. Force F applied on a surface of area A and volume V. Let delta V the small change in volume. Here what is the volume stress? You know the volume stress is equal to F by A. What is the volume strain? Volume strain is equal to delta V by V. Delta V by V. Change in volume by original volume. So bulk modulus you know. Bulk modulus is equal to volume stress divided by volume strain. So bulk modulus V equals volume stress F by A divided by delta V by V. So bulk modulus V is equal to F by A into capital V by delta small v. Delta V is volume, change in volume. So this V is original volume V. Delta V is the change in volume. So bulk modulus V is equal to F V by A delta V. F V by A delta V. That is expression for bulk modulus. Unit you know volume stress by volume stress. Strain. Volume stress by volume strain. Volume stress F by A. Volume strain delta V by V. So bulk modulus F V by A delta V. Unit is stress by strain. Root number meter square, that is PA. Volume strain has no unit. So, unit for bulk modulus also. What is that? Root number meter square or PA. Formula ML raised to minus 1 D raised to minus 2. Force by area. KG meter raised to minus 1 second raised to minus 2. Same formula, same unit for rings modulus, bulk modulus. And next one is expression for rigidity modulus. That we are going to derive expression for rigidity modulus. What is the expression for rigidity modulus? Expression for rigidity modulus is the modulus of velocity for shape. So we are going to derive an expression for rigidity modulus. Rigidity modulus. R. Consider a surface of area A. A force applied, F applied. So a change in shape is an angle theta shifted. Shearing strain, shear. Here shear, a change in angle produced, a shift produced, theta. Theta is the shearing strain. Area of the surface, a force applied. So here the strain, a stress is shearing, not steering, but shearing. Shearing stress is equal to F by A, force by area. What is the shearing strain? Shearing strain equal to theta. Rigidity modulus, you know, rigidity modulus is equal to shear stress by strain. Here shearing stress by shearing strain. Shearing stress by shearing strain F by A by theta. So R equals rigidity modulus R equals F by a theta. Expression for rigidity modulus R F by A theta. So there are three moduli for last. K stress by strain. Three moduli. One Young's modulus Y MGL by pi R square. MG is F. F L by A pi R square delta L. A pi R square A delta L. In FL by A delta L, MGL by PR square delta L. 
second one is bulk modulus v p v by a delta v rigidity modulus r f by a theta f by a theta that is bulk modulus Young's modulus is f l by a delta L. that can be changed as m g l by pi r square delta L. these three are k that is coefficient of velocity Young's modulus, bulk modulus, rigidity modulus they are expressions already studied Next, we can study about a special thing that is you know f by a p f p v by delta v I'm sorry p v by delta v is the expression for bulk modulus f by a is equal to there f by a is pressure f by a is pressure f v by a delta v that is bulk modulus f by a can be written as p pressure so bulk modulus can be written as p v by delta v actually bulk modulus you know f v by a delta v here f by a is for fluids it is pressure the only one modulus, modulus of velocity for a fluid fluid means liquids and gases there are only one modulus of velocity that is bulk modulus in fluids no change in length no change in shape fluid only one modulus uh, only is the change in pressure volume pressure volume changes for a fluid so the bulk modulus of a gas or bulk modulus of a liquid that is actually PV by delta V pressure there not direct force it is pressure volume change so pressure PV by delta V that is expression for bulk modulus for a fluid so Young's modulus, bulk modulus and rigidity modulus for solids for bulk, uh, for fluids only one modulus of velocity that is bulk modulus PV by a delta so actually bulk modulus refers what? bulk modulus refers the incompressibility of a fluid incompressibility means volume increases now pressure decreases incompressibility of fluid so compressibility of a fluid compressibility compressibility beta equals 1 by b beta equals 1 by b so compressibility is the reciprocal of bulk modulus for a fluid so define compressibility compressibility is the reciprocal of bulk modulus because bulk modulus refers the incompressibility of matter so compressibility beta 1 by v so what is the unit for compressibility 1 by newton per meter square 1 by newton per meter square 1 by pa pa raised to minus 1 that is compressibility pa raised to minus 1 formula is 1 divided by ml raised to minus 1 t raised to minus 2 so m raised to minus 1 l t square m raised to minus 1 l t square that is the formula for uh, compressibility beta so 1 by pa 1 divided by root number meter square is kg raised to minus 1 meter second square 1 by pa that is the unit for compressibility reciprocal of bulk modulus